Hey guys, it's Stark here, and I want to do the quickest possible to tutorial on um, relative pasting relative references, and it's it's not the most exciting thing ever. However, once you set it up, it makes your life a lot easier, especially in Houdini. And what this allows you to do, at, at least in the way that I'm showing it, is you could change one parameter, just a slider, and it's gonna import all of the correct versions, switch to the correct, uh, in this case, I'm just gonna do a simple particle system, but the correct correct color and wind direction. So let me just get started. And this is, this is a super watered down um, technique that I used uh, for a project that I'll give you a link to. So let me just get started. Uh, I'm just gonna create a null. That's all we're gonna do. And uh, what's a cool color? Yellow, nice mustardy color. So I'm just gonna change the shape so that it's recognizable. And I scaled my my screen is like a super wide screen, but I scaled it down to 1080p for the recording so that it's easier. And I seem to like doing a circle. And I'm just gonna call this um, version. Now you know what? Let's call it controller. Okay, and we could get rid of all of this stuff by going into the parameters, edit parameter, interface, and then what I'm going to do is we need an integer. So it's just a number that's, so let's call it version. It's it's like one, two, three, four. It's not, uh, there's no in-betweens. There's no, it's not a float number. There's no 1.2 because we're versioning. You could have a version 1.2, but it's not going to make sense. So we'll call it version. Okay, back here, and I'm just gonna hit apply, and you'll see it go right here, but because of how I am, I'm just gonna put it into a new folder called control, and then let's delete parameters, delete parameters, and delete parameters, and then it's kind of a stupid thing, but I'll just call that folder name. We'll hit apply and let's go here. Now we want to set the range to at least one and lock it, at least in this case, because the way I set up my file, it starts at version one. Um, 10 should be fine, but I'll just do five and that's just going to lock these guys between. Okay. So with this parameter, we're going to be able to run a ton of stuff and I think after just the little examples I give it'll make a lot of sense and then you could kind of go with it and I'm gonna I'm gonna use only I think one expression and I'm gonna use it on the switches because if you're new to this so I'm not overwhelming you so I already uh I have a finished scene but I, I kind of set these up and all this is is we're gonna have the particle system here which is going to be different geometry than the actual geometry that's going to be rendered. And all this is doing is it's an Alembic file, which let me point to it. We're going to go to set up a thing here to here, Alembic. And then I think we're in the, we're in the render. So I'm just going to hit teapot version one. Okay. It's literally nothing crazy at all and I set up a camera so all this is doing is converting it so I'll show you just converting it to a polygon and then I resized it because I don't know it was a better size so so it's one fifth size all right now I'm gonna go into particles and it's the exact same thing however oh, keep doing it go here We'll go to Alembic, and then we'll go to Emitter, and this. Now, here's the thing. We have these two, right? Cool. So the problem with this is like, I only have two Alembic files. Or it's not even the problem. It's what this whole thing is about, is that the project I had, I had maybe it was 20 different versions. It was animated bipeds, and then they had all these streams coming off of them and 
to go into each single thing every single time on a new version, it was just not fun. Okay? So, that's where this copying the parameter comes in. Okay? Now, the cool thing about Houdini is see how it's version 1? And then our number right there. So we're just going to do this. Paste relative reference. Okay? Hit enter. Hit enter. And then we'll go into the particles, and it's the exact same thing. Uh, if I could paste relative reference. Now, the thing about this is, this is going to be where our particles are, so, I mean, technically it's not going to render the geometry, but let me just show you already what it's doing. So now look it automatically loads in the other geo okay and it's for this one it's just the handle so if you can't see it now let's go to the let's take it one step further but i'm going to go to the first so I'm just go to the first lemic file now let's go to particles or and then we're just going to do a simple pop network okay thrilling right yeah so I'm just gonna resize this guy here and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a wind force okay simple wind forced and force not forced and I think we want to do negative one ah not negative plus one okay it's a little bit crazy so let's change this down to like five and so it's pushing to the left and maybe you're getting a hint of maybe I don't know what we're gonna do so let's change the turbulence to like three frequency to um, let's do 0.5 and then amplitude seven and I'm just gonna have these die out quickly so I want to do a birth of like these are in seconds so let's do like 0 0.5 0 0.2 and then cool right so this this is cool however let's go up and I'm trying not to use hotkeys now if we go to version 2 the thing is it's coming from and uh, it, it's not noticeable here but let me turn it up let me turn up the wind force to like 10 the thing is is we want it to go in the opposite direction so when it's going left, we kind of want the wind to go right, okay? So, again, this isn't exciting. I'm just trying to <laughs> illustrate the idea. So what we're going to do is there's something called a switch, okay? And we're going to put it in here, and we have our wind force. And the only difference is going to be this. So we have the first one, which is negative 1. And because we already have everything in, we're just going to change this to, actually, let's change it to zero. So there's no force on anything. And then this guy to one. Now you see the solid line, so it's going to the left. Now here's where you select the input, OK? So if we go here, and this starts at zero, which some inputs and stuff in Houdini are different, like zero and one. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're just going to write a simple conditional statement, I guess, or condition. So we're going to say, oh, turn off capitalize. So if I'm going to paste, again, we're just going to paste that relative reference. So if the version, which we're on version one, is greater than one okay then the input will be one or else it'll be zero now in this zero is it, it's it's base zero so it's zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it doesn't start at one so that's why i'm doing that okay and you can see that the selected input is one so it's on the right 
Okay, now watch. Again. Start here, and then we'll go back in the particles, go back in the pop network, and it switched to the correct wind direction again. Now, just to illustrate this even more, we could just do pop color. Okay? Pop. Pop. Color. And we'll do... Let's do red. And we'll do... Second one. Green. Okay? Now, we don't have to retype it because it's the exact same thing. So, let's go in here. Ready? So it's red. Let's go. We'll go up. All right, I had to resume it because sometimes the Olympic thing locks up and then it won't update. So here we go. Let me just make this bigger. I didn't even add a mantra node or anything. So now you can see, just do that, and then, oh, okay, we're done. Just update the hash, and there you go. So now it's loading in, making the correct switches, doing everything by just pasting this number to where it should be. There we go, start the cache over. And you could do anything with that. And the other thing you could do is, let's say, I'll just take it one step further, and then we'll do, um, uh, I don't want to do wrench. So let's do create PBR, and let's do an output. So the other thing you could do is, like, let's say, um, let's go to our thing and then do, like, version. And you could just do teapot out version one dot dollar f for each frame dot exr well guess what now you could do that so if you render it it'll even every time you just go in here if you did all of the work and everything every time you update it now when you go to re-render it'll start over it'll do version two and so on and so on and then you could even do a uh, let's do a cop network and then do a f like a file. So let's say you had an image sequence, okay? And you're like, all right, I want to load it in. So you would just do the, f I don't have an image sequence, unfortunately, but you get the point. If it was that one that I just rendered, I could just type in the, the file path and then it would load it in just by changing this number. So that's really it, and I'll show you the project link after this. So that's all. I hope you guys find this useful, and it's very fun if you're uh, lazy, but I don't know. I think it's cool. So that's all.